A-level biology is one of those subjects where there is a high, high volume. Conceptually, it's pretty straightforward. But added with the high volume with the meticulous nature of the mark scheme and how specific you need to be in your answers, this is what makes A-level biology quite difficult. But with these tips, you can overcome both those hurdles. Let's get into the video. Hey guys, my name's Sunny. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, good to see you. Today we're talking about how I achieved an A in A-level biology. And these tips, I'm pretty sure if applied well, can definitely get you between an A to an A star, no doubt about it. Make sure you look in the description below and you browse through the timestamps and jump around in the video to bits which you find interesting or feel like will be helpful to you. Tip number one is nail your conceptual understanding. Do you understand osmosis? Do you understand lock and key theory? Do you understand how digestion occurs? If you can answer all of these questions, just nail your understanding first, then you're definitely heading in the right direction to achieving your A star in A-level biology. There's such a broad range of topics, each with their own concepts and very few discrete facts. And so you need to be able to understand everything before you can actually even go into answering them. I'd say understanding does 75% of the work, but that last 25 is crucial because even though you understand a topic, you can still only score half marks in a question, even if you understand it perfectly. And this is because you don't know the mark scheme and the mark scheme is extremely specific, but we'll tackle that in a later point. Tip number two for getting an A or A star in biology is to monitor your weak points and stay on top of them because A-level biology, like I mentioned before, has such a range of topics where it can be easily to be blinded by the topics which you're good at because they'll grab your attention the most. But it's the ones lurking in the background which you're not so good at, which will definitely creep up on you during the exams and steal countless marks away from you for not having that specificity. Make sure you monitor them well and give them the required attention so they're not your downfall in these exams. Tip number three will be to practice a lot on the differentiators. What I mean by this is make sure you have enough practice on the questions which are designed to be difficult. Now this will include maths questions, evaluation questions and statistical analysis. These three question types often trip up a lot of students and if you can make sure that you understand how to tackle them and score more than half marks on them because you don't need full marks to get an A star, we know this by now. But if you can get more than half marks on these difficult questions, which usually leave most students with only one mark, if any, then this will definitely put you a step above the rest and you'll be able to get that A star or A. So I mentioned before that even though you can understand a topic completely, you can still not score the maximum amount of marks available in the question. Now this is because you don't know the mark scheme. And the way around this is doing a lot, a lot, a lot of exam questions or past papers. And now what this does is it directly exposes you to the mark scheme. The examiner is showing you exactly what they want you to say, exactly how they want you to say it. And this saves you a lot of time because then you're not waffling in your questions, trying to cram in as many keywords as possible because you know exactly what the keywords are. And then you can learn the mark scheme by making the flashcards of questions which you get wrong. And by turning this into flashcards, you have high exposure to the mark scheme. And then when a question similar to this or exactly the same as this comes up, you already have an idea of what the mark scheme is going to say, and you can just write that. For four mark questions, I've written two sentences before and collected the full four marks because I knew what the mark scheme was looking for and all you need to do is include the keywords and you'll get your marks. And that's exactly how you study smart. So the questions you don't know, turn them into flashcards and on the back, make sure you put the mark scheme and write it word for word and just learn that. But this won't work unless you already have your conceptual understanding down. And this is back to point number one. So make sure you understand the topic before you go doing the practice questions and then if you still get it wrong, then you know it's not because of your understanding, but because you don't know the mark scheme. And that's fine, because now you know it. 
My last tip is going to be a part of the A-level biology course, which I actually didn't have to do due to my A-levels being set during the COVID year. And this is the biology essay, which is at the end of paper three, I believe. And this is essentially a, um, a synopsis or a kind of scope across the entire course. For example, this essay could say, what's the importance of proteins in biology? And so what this is essentially asking you to do is to scope the entire course of when proteins have been used or been mentioned or are a key component of that topic and then explain how it's used and why it's important. And so how you can score well in this or how I was planning on approaching this is by giving myself random questions like what's the importance of proteins or how are carbohydrates used in biology and then thinking and then making a mind map of all the times I can think that a protein or carbohydrate has been used, writing this down and then linking them and explaining the link and then explaining the importance and then moving on to the next one. And what this will do is it will actually train your brain on being able to make links. And it also helps you revise topics in, in a weird way because it gets you thinking about multiple things at the same time, things that you wouldn't have been thinking about if you didn't ask yourself, what's the importance of carbohydrates? And then if you see that you have gaps in your knowledge, you can grab a revision guide or a textbook, scroll through the contents, and if anything pops up in your head, oh yeah, that uses carbohydrates, or oh yeah, that uses proteins, you can go have a look in there and then add that to your essay plan essentially, or your mind map, and then that will help you build up the depth and breadth of knowledge which you need to answer these questions, these essays. They're 25 marks and so this means they're pretty long. So you do need to have quite a few ideas roaming in your head and be ready to reel them off in the essay when the time comes. But yeah, that's exactly how I was planning on tackling this and it's a method actually suggested by my teachers and it sounded pretty good to me so I was going to follow it very well. In terms of resources, I would suggest YouTubers but also physics maths tutor because physics maths tutor also provides flashcards and with biology being so vast the fact that physics maths tutor has already made flashcards specific to your exam board for biology it makes it really easy for you to just go on there and revise an entire topic in a couple minutes because there are flashcards there the great thing about flashcards also is that it uses active recall which is a non-passive way of learning, which means it's difficult and means you're going to remember it if you do it correctly. And so flashcards on Physics Maths Tutor will also be left in the description. But as well as this, the past paper questions and the exam style questions, which you can actually find on there as well, are brilliant for practice. Say you're revising um, lipids today. You can go through your lipids flashcards check you understand everything if not grab your vision guide go through it make sure you fill those gaps and then you go on the same site and you find the questions on lipids and you go through those and then if you find that your understanding spot on but you get a few questions wrong then you can add those lipid questions which you got wrong with the correct answer behind them derived directly from the mark scheme put that on the back of your flashcard and then you literally bulletproof yourself through lipids essentially and so this is the exact flow study flow system which i used whilst i was at college and if i'm being honest i'm shocked i didn't get an a star but an a it was definitely a solid a and i'd definitely recommend this method of revising biology 100 percent thank you for making it to the end of the video guys if you have any questions pertaining to a level biology make sure you leave it in the description and i'll get right back to you make sure you like and subscribe and share this video with anybody who is going through a level biology right now and they need any help so yeah guys i'll see you next week peace